Today we shall be reading from the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. I'm going to start my reading from verse 16. Or let me start from verse 15. Read all through to 19. Is yet unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Lord, speak to us expressly today. Grant us the understanding of your words. And help us, Lord, to be empowered by you and by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, the Lord will be telling us, speaking to us with a message that is entitled, Power to Do and Undo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power to Do and Undo. I want us to understand something from the passage. The passage that was read was the conversation between Jesus and his disciples. And Jesus made an emphatic remark. Because the Jesus we are talking about is the very God of the very God. The Jesus that made this emphatic remark, he was there in the beginning. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the world. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. This same Jesus who, who we are talking about today. That gave this emphatic word to his disciple. Is the almighty God. The Bible calls him the almighty God. The everlasting father. The prince of peace. is the king of kings. is the king of glory. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the one that speaks and nobody can change it. He is part of the Godhead. That is why uh, Peter said, you are Christ, the Son of the living God. And now the Son of the living God, who the Bible said in the book of Philippians chapter 2, that he did not claim equality with God, but make himself no repetition. He was God. He was God himself. Being God himself, but did not claim equality at the time he was to die on the cross. He died on the cross in order to save you and I from our sin. And he said, as Peter I mean, as Paul said in Philippians, in Philippians chapter 2. Let me read it quickly. Philippians chapter 2. Paul said in verse 11, verse 10, he said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. 11 says and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus said to his disciples, I have given you power 
to unlock the heavens. I am giving you power to unlock the heavens. I am giving you power to unlock the earth. I am giving you power to unlock the earth. I am giving you power to do and undo things. And so when he was speaking to the disciples, when he was telling them in that book of Matthew chapter 16, he said, look, thou art Peter, telling Peter, you are Peter. And upon this rock, upon the rock, upon what you said, that thing you said out of your mouth, that I am the Christ. And now, who is Christ? Christ is the rock. Even though Peter meant the rock. But you must say that confession that I am Christ, upon that confession of Christ, upon this rock, upon Christ himself, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to establish my church upon Christ, the rock, the confession you have made, you say, I am Christ. Upon that confession that I am Christ, meaning Christ is the rock. Upon that rock, I will build my church. And no gates from the pit of hell will ever prevail against it. And because no gates of hell shall prevail against the things of the living God, Jesus went for that to say, He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of God. The keys of the kingdom of God. And when you have that key, you will be able to do and undo things. When you have that key, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you say, let it be on earth, so shall it be. Whatever you lose on earth, and you say, let it be, so shall it be. Hallelujah. So Jesus has given us that power. But unfortunately today, many believers have lost the power. Because they are not walking with the Lord. If you continue to walk with your Lord Jesus Christ, you will regain that power he has given unto you. Because the Bible says, at the name of Jesus. Now the key the Lord has given to the disciples is his name. That at the mention of that name of Jesus, every name should bow. At the mention of that name, you bind in that name. That's the key. The keys of the kingdom is the name Jesus. The name you have pronounced Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ. In that name which is wrong, which my church is founded upon. When you call upon that name, every name must bow. When you say be loose, they'll be loose. When you say be bound, they'll be bound. Because whatever you say will be, will be. Whatever you say will not be, will not be. Because you are serving the living God. Hallelujah. And that's why he said in the book of Luke also, chapter 10. That's why he said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Couple of I said, Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I said earlier on, believers, we have lost the power because we are not following Jesus Christ, because we don't know the God we are serving. Now He has given you power. Not only the keys, that keys he has been to you, embedded in that key is the power to do and undo. Embedded in that key is the name Jesus. That when you call that name, every knee should bow. And he said he has given you power now, in that name, power to tread upon scorpion and serpent. To tread upon them. He said they will not hurt you because you have the key. To command them, you scorpion, you demon called scorpion, you demon called serpent, I command you to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. I paralyze you in the name of Jesus Christ. They must obey because whatever you say will be, that will be. Whatever you say will be, that will be. The power. To tread upon scorpion and serpent. 
Now I want you to understand something there. Now in the book of Matthew chapter 16, Jesus Christ did not give you what you are to bind and what you are to lose. But he said whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, will be losing in heaven. But he didn't give you what are those things. And in other passages we are reading now, he's beginning to unveil them unto us. But the things you have to bind and lose are what? This power of darkness. The powers of serpent that possess anyone. You bind that serpent and you lose that person from the serpent. Hallelujah. You bind that serpent and you do what? You lose the individual from the serpent. You bind that, that, that uh, scorpion and you lose the individual from the scorpion. Are you listening to me? Mommy. And not only that, Paul also gave us in Ephesians chapter 6, very popular, to make us understand that the one Jesus Christ is saying we should battle against, they are not human beings, my friends. They are principalities and power. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says there in verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are the ones you are fighting against. As I said in a message some time ago, you are not fighting against a human being. Any human being that has made himself your enemy. It's not because that person wants to make himself or himself enemy, your enemy. It's because the devil has possessed that person. Or the devil is, is, is manipulating the life of that person. And I tell you, it is the devil in the life of that person that you are buying. Any person that the devil is using against me, that power behind it, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you have the keys of the kingdom of what? Of heaven. Christ has given you the key. That's why you speak to that spirit that is tormenting the person, that is manipulating the person, the spirit must live in the name of Jesus Christ. But today what do we find? We are binding people. You are binding your friend. You are binding your family. You are binding everybody. No, don't bind people. Bind the spirit behind them. Because your battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of darkness. And you have the power to do and undo them. You have the power to loose and bind them. Loose those who are in the bondage, in their bondage. And bind them and cast them out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given you that power. God has given you that authority. So you must operate in that authority God has been to you. If you have Jesus in your life, you have that power already in you. If you have Jesus in your, in your life, you have that power. And you must operate in that power because Jesus is with you. Hallelujah. And the book of Revelation, look at what Jesus Christ said. Just to tell you that even within Jesus, whatever Jesus gave to you, and I'm going to round up with the book of, um, um, the book of um, Mark chapter 16. But let me read Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. Jesus Christ says something there, which I want you to understand. When you are said Jesus Christ is automatically yours. I am he that liveth. Verse 18, Revelation 1 18. And was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Not only the keys to the kingdom of God. That Jesus Christ has given to you. The keys of hell and death. They are also in your hands. Ah, they are in your hands. Because Jesus has that key. And you have Jesus into it in your life. Are you getting me? Automatically, you have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And you have the keys of death and death. And so, any power from the pit of hell that confronts you. And says, look, look, I'm going to kill you. You say, you cannot kill me because the keys is in my hand. How can you kill me? You cannot kill me. It's God that has the final say. When God says it's over, it is over. But if God is said it's not over, you cannot do me anything. As I said during the first service, that people, people will be struggling and stay in the house. And then they will be struggling and say, hey, there's a spirit in this house, so I cannot sleep here. Why can't you sleep here? Are you a child of God? If you're a child of God, you will sleep very well in that house. Let that spirit come. Let them come inside. Don't forget you have the keys of the kingdom of God. <laughs> Jesus Christ will give you that key to bind and to lose. Why would you be afraid of the demon that is coming into your house? He's not supposed to come there in the first place. When he comes, you tend to, you demon of darkness, you power of serpent, you power of scorpion, wherever you are, pack your load! 
Go out in Jesus' name. And then you go back to sleep. When it comes against that, you are back again. Now I'm going to command the power of the Holy Spirit to consume you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You either leave or you be consumed. They will run away because ha, they are afraid of the fire. And the fire comes down. With the name of Jesus. By the mention of the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost comes down and consume the plans of the enemy. And so the devil will run away from you. You cannot be running away. Enough of Christians running away from the devil. Enough. Don't run from the devil. Confront him because you have the key. You have the power to do and undo. Let me conclude like this. Jesus Christ said in the book of Mark chapter 16. Excuse me. Verse, verse 16. Verse 16 to 18. It says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now I want you to understand some people, some, some people come to me and say they believe in Jesus Christ. I say, You, you don't believe in Jesus Christ. Are you a Christian? He said, I'm not a Christian. Uh, but you believe in Jesus Christ. I say, You cannot believe. He said, But your Bible says, If you believe in him, I say, the Bible says, You believe in him. You must accept him. As you cannot believe in somebody you have not accepted. If you have not accepted me as your pastor, you will not what? Believe in my word. But if you, if for you to believe in my word, you would have accepted my person. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't believe in me. How can you believe? You can't believe. So that word believe connotes accepting him as your Lord and Savior, then you shall be saved. Somebody say, and this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, just as Paul says, in the name of Jesus, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not all them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. In my name, you will do these things. Why? Because I have given you the keys. I have given you the power to do and undo. Have you the power to, to somebody will not go and poison your drink? We're well, unknowing to you. You kind of drink and you drink it. You say, Father, thank you for this drink. Thank you for this drink. God give to me this fruit drink. And it is poisoned. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. There are two things that may happen. Is that God will allow, as you want to turn to your mouth, the thing to drop and spill on the floor? Or God will allow you to drink it because you have prayed in the name of Jesus. And you drink it. He said, nothing will do what? We harm you. You drink it, bam, bam, bam. And say, ah, thank you. Thank you for this drink you gave to me. They'll be looking at you and say, maybe we'll fall and die now. Maybe we'll fall and die. And you're not falling, you're not dying. You're not, you cannot fall and die. Why? Because you have the keys. You have the power to do and undo. You have already, you have already canceled that evil in that drink. And you drank it. And it can harm you not. But don't forget you need Jesus. Because Jesus is the power behind the power given to you. Now listen, Jesus is what? The power behind the power given to you to do and undo. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word this day. As many, O oh Lord, who have had your word, as many, O oh Lord, listening over the internet, who have not surrendered unto you and they are seeking for this power to do and undo. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will grant them, you, 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 you will grant them the grace to accept you and as they turn their life to you, Father, we pray, Father, the power to do and undo, not to do and undo on human beings, but on powers using human beings. You will grant unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. As believers, empower us. Steer in us again that fire to realize again that we have the power to do and undo. Grant us, Lord, the grace to walk with you all the day of our life so that this power will not drain from our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say,